I'm lucky enough to be able to stay at home and have to come up with things to do around the house. I hope you're safe as well and for those of you with more free time than usual, I thought I'd start a little series with creative things I'm doing at home. Today I'm going to show you how I created this journal for me to practice my handwriting. It's been one of my goals for a very long time and I've always put it off, but now that we're going through these tough times, I've been journaling a lot more. And even though journaling serves its purpose regardless of the neatness of your handwriting, since I'm stuck at home, I thought I might as well try to improve it. There are already great tutorials out there that teach you how to improve your handwriting in a very technical sense, and I'm actually gonna link some in the description, but I wanted something a little more casual, I guess, just to have something relatively productive to focus on. You can find pre-made practice sheets online that you can print out and use straight away. It's certainly quicker and easier and you'll get the same results, but I really wanted to make a notebook dedicated to this because it'll keep me more motivated to use it. I searched for inspiration and looked for fonts that were realistic for daily handwriting, though you can literally learn how to write in any font that you like. I chose two print fonts and a cursive and I'll of course link them down below for you. After downloading the fonts, I created a document with all the letters and arranged them in such a way that I could cut them out and use the sections on different pages in my journal. I also wrote some pangrams, which are sentences that contain every letter of the alphabet, so they're great for practice and reference as well. I printed everything on clear sticker paper, but you can use regular paper and just glue it down. I used the first two pages of the notebook as reference pages, so these have all the lowercase and uppercase letters in each of the fonts, so that whenever I need to reference the letters, I can easily find them. I left a couple of blank pages just in case I want to add it to my font library later on, but it's always better to start off slow and learn them one by one. For the actual practice pages, I placed the vertical letters on the left side so that I can practice while being able to reference each letter, and of course I did this for all of the fonts. When creating the document on my computer, I just made sure that the letters were spaced out to coincide with the size of my dot grid. Once that is done, there's some good news and some bad news. The good news is that you will improve through regular practice, but the bad news is that you will only improve <laughs> through regular practice. So just like when we were in primary school, I am writing the same letter over and over again. But the key is to go very slowly. Stop after each letter, compare it to the reference, and see where you need to improve, whether it's the size or the proportion or just the shape of the letter. You don't necessarily have to copy it exactly, just decide on the shape you like best so that when you're writing you can stay consistent and you won't have, for example, two F's that look different from each other. None of us were born knowing how to write neatly, it's something that you have to do repeatedly in order for it to become muscle memory, and this holds true for any skill, so don't be discouraged if you have handwriting envy or if it looks easy for someone else, it just means that if you put in the work, you will see results. After I felt like I had practiced enough and felt confident in remembering the shape of each letter, I practiced by writing some quotes, but daily journaling is also a great opportunity to practice.
during this process, you want to make sure that you enjoy it and that you're patient with yourself because it takes some time for your muscle memory to be replaced by something else. And so you might find that you'll fall into some of your quote unquote bad habits or just habits that you're trying to replace, but everything will come more naturally the more you do it. And if you forget how to make a certain letter, you can always go back to the reference pages. Once again, even though it's kind of hard, the key is to go slowly, especially at first. Otherwise, your brain is going to go back to your regular muscle memory and it's going to be hard to see any improvement. So anyways, just have patience and you'll be able to enjoy your progress once you get to compare your old handwriting to the improved one. When I was in school, we were never taught how to write in print, we only learned cursive. So I have to be very intentional while learning how to write in print and I obviously need a lot more practice to catch up to someone who's learned it as a child, at least as far as speed is concerned and I think this goes both ways. Without getting too technical, I do have some final tips. Try to make sure that your letters are the same size, including the tall and hanging parts of the letters. The spacing between the words should be consistent, as well as the slanting of your writing. You should also try to experiment with different writing supplies to find the one that you like best, and maybe also play around with your pen grip and see what gives you the best results. Regardless of how you decide to spend your free time during this period, if you take away anything from this video, I hope it's that you should be brave enough to be bad at something new. Mm -hmm.